Hi and welcome to another episode of McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we're going to be using the rule for the nth term of a geometric sequence to make predictions. You can contact me if you have any questions or if you'd like to make a suggestion of a video you'd like to see at mcclutchymaths at yahoo.com. This video is aimed at Year 12 General Math students and Year 11 Math Method students. Let's get started. So I have a question. The fourth term of a geometric sequence is 16 and the eighth term is 256. What is the 16th term of this sequence? And I've shown the formula here for a geometric sequence. Now you might ask, that's going to be very hard because you don't know the first term and you don't know the common ratio. And it's very hard to work between two numbers when you don't know what the common ratio is. So how would we find what term 1 is and what r is? We're going to do this by solving using simultaneous equations. So firstly, from the information I'm given in the question, I know that term 4 is equal to 16. And that is equal to term 1 times r to the power of 3. r to the power of 3 is really r to the power of n minus 1. And it's the fourth term. So 4 take away 1 gives me 3. I'm also given information to make a second equation. The eighth term is 256. And that's equal to the first term multiplied by r to the power of 7. So let's clean this up a little bit. We'll take away term 4 and we'll take away the 8th term. What I'm left with is two simultaneous equations. So I'm going to name them 1 and 2. Now there are two variables here that I don't know, term 1 and the common ratio r. And I can use this to find these information by solving these simultaneously. Now ordinarily my go-to would be to do this by substitution. I'd have to find what term 1 is on its own, perhaps by doing 16 divided by r to the 3, substituting that into the second equation, and then trying to solve. But I can tell you now that it is near impossible to do it that way. The best method for this is to use the elimination method. So what I'm actually going to do this time is divide equation 2 by equation 1. Let's have a look at how that would look. So here are my two original equations. I'm now going to change these so that the left hand side is divided by itself and the right hand side of the equation is divided by itself. Take a look. We've now got on the left 256 equals 16 and then everything on the right hand side in the same order is going to be divided. So let's do this a little bit further. If I do on my calculator 256 divided by 16 I'll get the answer 16 so I've simplified the left hand side. Now I need to simplify the right hand side. Well taking a look at it it looks kind of complicated but I've got term 1 on the top and term 1 on the bottom. And anything divided by itself is going to give me the answer of 1. So term 1 is going to cancel out, leaving me with just one variable, which is r. So let's clean that up a little bit. Now you'll notice I've suddenly jumped to r to the power of 7 take away 3. You might be wondering how on earth I got there. For this you need to memorise your index laws from probably grade 9. Remember our index laws when we have the same base and we do a division, then we can simply subtract our indices. So I've got a power of 7 divided by r to the power of 3. That becomes r to the power of 7 take away 3, which is going to be r to the power of 4. Now I can simply do this on my calculator. I'm going to take the fourth root. And then I'm going to find that r is equal to 2. So now I've got the common ratio. I'm halfway there. Okay, so I can use that information now to substitute back into equation 1 and I'm going to be able to find now the value of the first term. So let's put that into the equation. So here now I've got 16 equals term 1 times 2 to the power of 3. Now some of you might need to use your calculator, some of you might not. And you'd know that 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So now I can simply rearrange the equation, divide both sides by 8 and I've worked out that term 1 is equal to 2. So now I have the key information, term 1 is equal to 2, the common ratio is 2. Now I can find the 16th term. Let's substitute that back into our original recursion statement. We've now got term n equals 2 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. And according to the question, the term n is going to be equal to 16. So let's substitute everywhere we see n with a 16. Now I've got term 16 equals 2 times 2 to the power of 16 take away 1, which is 2 to the power of 15. If I evaluate that on my calculator, I've now found that term 16 is 65,536. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget you can email me at mcclutchymaths at yahoo.com 
for any questions or if you'd like me to do a shout out for you or to create a video just for you. Thank you very much for your time.